Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com slash wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to Step 2 in our Free Steps to Gladiator for Elemental Shaman. Before we go any further, if you missed Step 1, be sure to go back and watch that first. If you've already seen it, then you are in the right place. Step 2 is all about preparing for PvP, including how you should be maxing your damage, and then we'll be covering how to make the most out of the crowd control at your disposal. So, let's get started. First, let's cover maximizing your damage. As Elemental, there is a few tips and tricks you can do to deal the maximum damage in arena games. Most importantly is maintaining flame shocks. Now you want to be using flame shocks the second it's up, aiming to have it on as many targets as possible. This is for a few reasons. Firstly, it's just simply the damage it deals. Flame shock is often your highest damage over a course of a game. The passive damage provided should not be overlooked. The second reason is of course flame shock ticks in turn provide you with lava surge procs, making your next lava burst instant. And lava bursts cast on targets with flame shock, of course, always critical strike. And on top of all of that, flame shock even increases the damage of your earth shock, with each tick adding a stack to your Azerite talent of choice, lava shock. Master of Elements is your talent of choice on the level 60 row. What this talent does is it increases the damage of your next nature, physical or frost ability by 20% after casting a lava burst. Keeping track of this proc is extremely important in min-maxing your damage, and makes weaving in lava bursts before using any of your hard hitting cooldowns imperative. So primarily before using either Earthshock or your lightning bolt from Stormkeeper, you should always look to first lava burst. This means also weaving in between Stormkeeper charges. Our next tip is not wasting Lava Surge procs. When you have a large amount of Flame Shocks out, you'll be getting these very consistently. Sitting on a proc for too long can result in potentially a lot of wasted damage. Elementals use Maelstrom to cast Earth Shock, which is by far your hardest hitting ability in Arena. This means overcapping on Maelstrom and wasting potential Earth Shocks can have a negative effect on your overall damage. It's often worth to sit on Maelstrom until you can reach 20 Lava Shock stacks. However, don't sit on 100 Maelstrom for too long. Now if you watched part 1, you would have seen that Natural Harmony was our Azerite trait of choice after Lava Shock. This is due to the large amount of overall stats you gain. But to gain these stats, you need to be casting the relevant spell every 12 seconds. This means weaving in Lightning Bolts and Frost Shocks where possible, will give you a large boost of raw stats, and something that can really help in min-maxing your overall damage. Next up was our optional talent of choice, Surge of Power. Surge of Power is incredibly versatile. You can use it as a root, you can use it to spread some extra flame shocks, but the main use of this ability is the additional chance to overload during your Lightning Bolt. Pair this up with Stormkeeper and you can deal some crazy burst damage with a single Lightning Bolt if you get some good RNG. Fire Elemental alone without Primal Elementalist is also a very strong cooldown. Not only does it give you good damage, but will also generate Maelstrom per Flame Shock you currently have out. So look to use this cooldown when you already have some Flame Shocks currently out. Primal Fire Elemental just increases its damage, but also gives you access to Meteor. This does a nice little chunk of burst damage that you can combine with the rest of your abilities. So you could Earth Shock the target into a Meteor to hit at the exact same time, giving some unexpected instant burst damage. Sky Fury Totem provides you and your team with a 20% increase to critical damage or healing for 15 seconds. This totem has a 40 yard range, best combined with some burst damage from either you or your team. 
Look to aim to place this behind pillars, as teams often focus on killing it if they see it. A well placed Sky Fury can have full uptime for the entirety of you or your teammates burst damage. Moving on to the second part of this guide which is crowd control, and how to maximise the use of the crowd control you have at your disposal. Before we look a little more in depth, let's take a look at what crowd control Elemental Shaman has. Number 1 Lightning Lasso Number 2 Hex Number 3 Cap Totem Number 4 Frost Shock and Earth Find And Number 5 Wind Shear Starting off with Lightning Lasso it's not only an extremely strong crowd control, but one of your hardest hitting abilities. A full channel will own not only lock your opponent down for 5 seconds, but also deal a moderate amount of damage. Lion Lasso can also be channeled whilst moving and is often used as a tool to set up kills. Bear in mind, Lightning Lasso can be interrupted, so it requires a little bit more setup in 3v3, and also benefits from all damage modifiers. So things like Unused Trinkets and even Sky Fury help your lasso pack that extra punch. Hex is a 30 second cooldown polymorph effect, sharing diminishing returns with abilities on the sap and polymorph diminishing returns. Although unlike polymorph, Hex does not heal the target and requires a little more damage in order to break. Hex can be decursed by mages, druids and other shamans, meaning often against certain compositions you won't be able to find much use. However, teams not bringing a decurse makes this crowd control a lot stronger. So if a team has a hex dispel, look to either hex that target or cover with other abilities so they're unable to dispel it. If the composition you are facing doesn't have a decurse, look to utilise this ability a little more. Cap Totem is a tricky one. It requires 2 seconds in order to initiate and then stuns all targets in a small radius for 3 seconds. This is best used as a restun or as a way to extend crowd control. Say for instance if you're playing with a mage, you can Cap Totem out of his polymorph for some added crowd control. However, be careful when using Cap Totem on your kill targets as you will put Lightning Lasso on diminishing returns, meaning it's going to do less damage and lock the target down for a shorter period. Frost Shock deals some moderate damage and slows enemies for 50% for 6 seconds. You should always aim to try to keep this up on targets looking to either kite you or as a way for you to kite melee. Not only is it extremely a powerful slow with a, without a cooldown, Getting in the habit of keeping this up will also increase your damage via natural harmony. As for Earthbind, it's just an easier way to apply your slow, slowing it in an area of effect where you put the totem. Great for slowing multiple enemies at once and even slowing targets around pillars. Our last crowd control is Shaman's Interrupt Wind Shear. This is a short cooldown interrupt that can be used multiple ways, as with all interrupts. You can use it offensively on healers to lock casted heals, you can use it on important crowd control to reduce CC on either yourself or your healer, or simply as a way to reduce some damage, locking important spells such as Greater Pyroblast or even Chaos Bolts. Okay then guys, that just about rounds off Step 2 in our free Step to Gladiator series. Stay tuned for Step 3 where we're going to be covering entering the arena, including picking the correct composition and the objectives of your class once you're inside of the arena. And as always, thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed this video.